Ahoy there mates, so we're by here today. Today we're playing uh, Hitchman's Story once again. Uh, this is part 4 of basically the first route that I'm going to try. Uh, I'm only doing this weekly, so... Eh, I know it's not going to be pretty big, at least on... Like, I know I'm taking the slower way, but... Sometimes you gotta go slow and to enjoy everything. That and I, I do have stuff going on in the background. Switch. Need to set a timer. Let's do an hour and forty-five. It's that. As far as I can tell, your boss has basically turned into a supervillain shell company for the Scorpion Group. So he might have picked the paint, but paid for it? Doubt it. Good point. I don't think that dog food heist paid enough for a liter of soda, much less 20 gallons of paint. But hey, why don't we go find ourselves some index cards and string so we can set up a conspiracy board somewhere other than the secret supercomputer room, okay? Not that I don't appreciate the glimpse behind the curtain, but something tells me that if Scorpion finds us here, then it'll be the last thing we glimpse. Come on. I turn towards the exit motioning for Kate to follow. Stan, wait. Wait for what? Now you know I hate to pull rank, but listen to the vet on this one, okay? There are times to wait and talk things through, but this is not one of them. I keep moving and Kate does still doesn't follow. I mean it. Stop. Something else. And I mean it, Kate. I appreciate you calling me up here and showing me this. Really, I do. But I can't get caught in here, alright? You told me the big important thing you wanted to tell me, so now let's go. Once more, I turn to leave. That's the thing, Stan. There was one more thing that I needed to tell you. Know what? <laughs> Smoke <laughs> arises from the scorch mark in front of my feet. I stop dead in my tracks. Mouth agape as I. And I turn towards Kate to find her training a weapon at me. Uh, Kate? That's not my name. I blink, dumbfounded, glimpse at the weapon, blue and white. <laughs> just like the thing she used to open the door, just like Shining Nova. There you go. Knew you'd recognize me eventually. Just had to jog your memory a little. No way. There's just no way. This whole time, I thought I'd just been making pranks with some cool new co-worker. Not a world famous superhero! No, not just making friends. I've been flirting with the, a world's famous superhero. <laughs> How did I miss these signs? Maybe. Sorry. Elephant tranquilizers tend to make things a little hazy. But you. Your memory didn't need any jogging, did it? No, you recognized me from the moment you got here. That's why you went right up to me during orientation. That's why you've been following me around. It's also why you made such a grim, edgy character in SNS, wasn't it? You were overcompensating. And that's why... Are you telling me you left your name tag on so you could remember your fake name? Seriously? Hey, it's tough to keep everything straight when you're going undercover. There is nothing wrong with a cheat sheet. 
Miss One Syllable. You work at the absolute cutting edge of robotics, and you can't remember Kate? It's just, I have a lot of names to keep straight, okay? Anyway, I was going to answer three questions as an apology for being dishonest with you, and I'm counting that as the first one. So now, you only get two. I don't think that's gonna cover everything. You'll make do. Oh, come on, fire away. Was it all a lie? <laughs> oh, that's it. Am I not live streaming? Okay, I am. All this just to get my number? Isn't telling me this dangerous? All of these are really good questions, and I only get two. the thing that she was telling me the honest true. I, I wanted to believe that, so I'm not going to ask that one. I might ask that one last, so let's go with, is it telling me this dangerous? Isn't it dangerous to tell me all this? I could blow your cover. I'm past that stage, but honestly, I trust you more than anyone else in this place. Low bar, considering your profession. Maybe, but it still counts for something. You're capable of doing the right thing, Stan. I can tell. Maybe I'm capable of taking you down. Taking me? <laughs> okay, it's not that funny. But isn't it, though? Hey, last time you had your ass-kicking outfit on. I think this time I'd stand a chance. Oh, honey, every outfit is my ass-kicking outfit. It's like if we were playing basketball and I was dunking all over your face. So you made me switch shoes. It wouldn't change a thing. But you tried your best, so you get orange slices at halftime and a participation trophy at the end of the game. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'll put it in my trophy case next to my Hero Weekly cover issue. <laughs> wait, wait, you were the guy getting clobbered by Captain Commodore? <laughs> Holy shit! Isn't it Captain Commander? Honestly, no one knows. All right, I'm counting that as one question. You get one more. Make it count. Why me? Why me? Because we had a short conversation and then you tranquilized me? That can't be all of it. Well, it's like I said, Sam. I like you. Not coming out right. What I'm saying is. Suddenly, alarms blare, ink flame through the lair stone hall. Lights begin to flash, cutting Kate off, or rather, shiny Nova, before she can finish her thought. Shit, thought I had more time. Guess this is where we part ways. You must come with me. I got what I came for, but that's just the first step. I could use your help with the rest. How am I supposed to trust that after you just revealed that you've been deceiving me this whole time? This isn't an angle, Stan. I'm honestly making an offer. This is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. All the bad luck and desperate decisions that got you here, you can undo them. A total reset. All you have to do is go out on a limb and trust me. Or I could torpedo my career and live out my days in a trailer park somewhere, wondering when I'm going to wake up covered in scorpion stings. You're asking me to risk what little I've built here on what? What guarantee? I can't offer you one. But sometimes the only chance you have to break away from a system like this is to take that kind of risk. So 
Sometimes you have to bet on yourself. So what do you say? Ready to make that wager? Okay. Okay. Okay, you convinced me. I'll go with you. No idea where it'll take me, but screw it. Chips on the table. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm taking a... A bit... A back. A, a back? A back? A bark? <laughs> uh, sometimes I... I love being able to speak English, but it's not like the easiest thing in the world. By how quickly Nova lets her guard down. Without hesitation, lowering her weapon and starts casually walking up to me. With so much of a spring in a s her step, that was practically skipping. Still beaming, playfully punches me in the shoulder. Though. Uh, she is so <laughs> excited that it actually hurts a little. And that's the exciting part of forging your own path. The possibility of it all. The world's laid out in front of you, Sam. Not if we don't get out of here. Oh, right, of course. Escape first, celebration later. She motions to the door with her hand. Let's get moving. Main entrance is a ways off, but I think I figured out a way to get there that should avoid attention. Main entrance? No way. Scorpion will be there for sure. Cafeteria is our best bet. The cafeteria? Really? Trust me, I'll explain when we get there. Now come on. Oh... Okay, you take point then, Mr. X Henchman. You won't regret this, I promise. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm just now on a hero path. From being the guy that basically got hit a lot to basically being a new <laughs> arising hero. This is uh, interesting. Uh, bye. Oh crap! I forgot to read that. Damn it! Can I go back one? Is there a history thing? Uh, where's the? All right. I still have my doubts, but at this point, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna do... If I'm doing this... I have got to be all in on it. Or the odds... Are... Or the odds are good that... Ends with me carving up an... Em energy sword. So, with Kate be right behind me, I start jogging for the exit. She could probably go a bit faster on her own, but I... No... <clears throat> Sorry. If I push myself too hard, I just... be a liability if we run into trouble. No, not Kate. Shiny Nova. Christ. That's gonna be hard to get over. Superheroes aren't just like the rest of us. They're hardly even people. They're like monuments. Big statues with shiny plaques. Telling you that you, if you uphold our good old fashioned values, work hard, Get a little luggy, you can be larger than life. It's 
so to have spent this much time with one without even realizing it well it's jarring to say the least hell I played spells and swords with one not to mention all the flirting I can't stress that part enough. <laughs> but I have got to put all that aside for now and focus on what's in front of me. We need to get out of here and we need to do it fast. Even with the alarms blaring, the halls are mostly empty. Only a skeleton crew is up this early. The research ring was always light on staff anyways. I glanced at Nova, who as expectedly has no trouble keeping up. If we maintain this pace, we should be alright. The cafeteria is a lot closer to the main entrance. I haven't heard an announcement specifying us as the intruders in our uniforms, but it's unlikely that Scorpion, that anyone but Scorpion herself, is going to stop us. Oh, hey there, buddy. There you are. I heard there was an alarm at your door, so I went to your room to assign you the task of investigating it, but you weren't there. So then I thought to myself, you know, Dave, a true squad supervisor, is always thorough when it comes to his teams. And that's when I decided to check on your door myself to make sure everything was A-OK. -okay. How is good old door 1385? Oh, you know, it opens and closes, like doors do. <laughs> doors do open and close, don't they? Da, 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 da. Wait, it opened? That door's not supposed to open. Oh no, not at all. It was just a turn of phrase. How do you turn a phrase? He means that the door wasn't really open, just that it's capable of opening, probably. Oh, hey there, Kate. Great job during the game last night. I've seen a lot of people brood, and by golly, you brooded harder than any of them. Thanks. You weren't so bad yourself, Sir Dave of Clan Dave. Oh, gosh, I didn't expect to find you here. I thought your squad was in the East Wing this morning. I, uh, got turned around. You know how these halls can be. Yeah, you know, right, buddy? Now we're really in a hurry, so... The door was open, you turned a phrase, and now an unauthorized contractor was at a door with level 4 security clearance? Stan, I expect better than this from a senior member of our squad. You're right, and I'm just so sorry, but we really have to... You know what my great uncle Dale Dave said about butts? Everyone has them, and by golly, they really stink. So no butts, Stan. You're staying right here until we sort all this out. Dave, listen, this is my fault, so... No, I'm the senior henchman here. You're right, Dave. It's my responsibility. What are you doing? I can be held up. You can't. Keep going. I'll deal with this. Sorry, can you speak up? All the excitement from game night really messed with my hearing. I look down at Nova. I can't see her eyes through the mask, but her jaw is set. Her brow is unfurled in confusion. I offer a weak smile and she shies. Don't you dare stand me up, asshole. She lightly bl uh, blushes her hair uh, against uh, my shoulder and turns to go. Well, uh, this seems like a squad thing, and speaking of squads, I totally need to find my own, so... Hmm, well, I... Thanks, Dave! See you at lunch! Before Dave's brain could finish formulating whatever thought he's been working on, 
Nova is jogging down the hallway, safely on her way towards the cafeteria. Now I just have to find a way to weasel out my own way out. Ah, jeez, I totally forgot. Madam Scorpion wanted to see me after I checked on the door. Super top secret stuff, but I'll tell you everything you need to know about the door after that, okay? Sorry, but I need to check our protocol on this. Dave reaches into one of his uh, pouches and pulls out a small paperback book with floor bedrooms uh, visage printed on the front. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it says I need to hold you here until you can be properly questioned. Gosh, I'm sorry, buddy, but it looks like you're going to be late. Late? Dude, did I not tell you who I was meeting? Don't worry, I'm sure she'll understand. It's protocol! Everyone loves protocol! It's Lord Bedlam's protocol. Do you think Madam Scorpion is gonna give two shits what that little book has to say? You met her last night. Think about it. She did seem pretty quick to behead things. Gosh, buddy, I don't know. You might be right about her. But if we just start ignoring protocol, what happens next? It's like a slippery domino. Once it starts, it just keeps on slipping. I rub my eyes and sigh, trying my best to keep it together. Even if I had an hour, I'm not sure I could convince him to drop this. At least, not through any conversation with kind of reasoning. I might have to force my way past him. That's a gamble. Dave doesn't have much a, let's call, tactical instinct. But physically, he could give me a hard time. Better to avoid it if I can. Maybe I just Try a different diplomatic approach. Something more personal. You know, with all this talk about door 1385, I'm getting a little nostalgic. You remember the conversation we had there this week? It was a simpler time. It sure was, wasn't it? That was when you gave me those dating tips, I think? Oh yeah, things weren't going too hot on the app, were they? No, not hot at all. That was when you said I shouldn't date Jen from Squad 23, right? Yeah, that's right. And for the record, I still think it would be a bad idea. Well, I don't. There's no rule against it, and I like her. I don't see why I can't ask her out just because I'm a supervisor. Uh, do what you want. Hey, whatever. I was just stating my opinion. Do what you want. Not like I can stop you. I will, thank you very much. But no thanks to your tone, mister. I'm still your supervisor, you know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's been nice reminiscing, but why don't we catch up more at lunch, okay? See you then. I start to walk forward, but Dave holds up a hand to stop me. Damn it. I thought I might have distracted him enough to let me slip by, but his memory is better than I thought. Whoa, just where do you think you're going, mister? We talked about this. You have to wait here. It's protocol. And protocol is protocol. Just let me pass. So you've mentioned, and I get it, man. But I really need to go. So what do you say? Will you let me pass? I'm asking you as my supervisor. And more than that, as my... Well, my best buddy. Help me out here. Stan, I want to believe that. But you know, I'm not so sure that we are. You haven't been very respectful lately, in my opinion. You're very nice, so when you say you're my best buddy, it makes me think that you're just trying to butter my bread. Don't you mean butter you up? 
See? That's exactly what I'm talking about. I mean what I say, and I say what I mean, but you're always trying to tie my words into a knot and toss them back at me. It's disrespectful. So you know what? No, I don't think you can leave. You're staying right here until I say you can go, because I'm your supervisor, and you will respect me! My hand inches towards my belt, uh, fingering the hilt of my baton. I already told you that I can't stay, Dave. I'm leaving, one way or another. It doesn't matter if you're my supervisor or not. I grasp the fur, my baton firmly, and start uh, squaring my stance. So much for the diplomatic approach. Dave takes a nose and reaches for his own weapon. Oh, it matters, Stan. It matters more than anything. Of course you think that. I've been patient with you, Dave. Real patient. Like a monk in purple spandex while you strut around with that big grin on your face, reminding me how you're in charge. Like your job title makes you so special. But it doesn't. When some cape demigod crashes our little heists, you and I are identical to them. Whatever rank Bedlam may plaster on your ID, you're not above me. Not really. So when I say that I'm leaving, I don't think you can actually stop me. I pull out my baton, snap it open with a flick, and press a button on its hilt. Sparks dance around its uh, shock coils in response. But you're free to try. Dan's eyes narrow. His grip tightens at the hilt of his own baton. How dare you! You will refer to him as Lord Bedlam, Henchman 065. Just like during uh, Wednesday's operation, Dave acts without hesitation or thought. His baton barely escapes his holster in the world's in the words that just fell left his lips, yet he already charges forward. But I knew that could would happen. So I So when he swipes at me with his baton, I'm ready to block. Even with two hands, I stumble back. Damn, I forgot how strong he was. I mean he's no dynamo, but for a normal guy, he's got some real muscle. But he's mad. And even thinking clearly. Not exactly a tactical uh, tactician, but if I could bait him in and wait for something particularly sloppy, then maybe I can catch him with a counter. Just surrender to the will of Lord Bedlam 065 and I'll only have your pay, Doc, for a month. Don't make it worse for yourself. Worse how? Would I have to spend even more time listening to stories about Great Grandpappy Dean Dave Duke or the rest of your dumbass family? It's Great Grandpappy Dean Dave Dwaynesenberg and he was a saint! Now, totally blinded with righteous fury of both Lord Bedlam and his endless, bu endlessly bizarre family tree. Dave presses the attack and swings wildly. I backpedal, parry, and block as best I can, but one of the particular vicious swings slips past and clips my side. It's a glancing uh, shot, but it leaves Dave emboldened. With a triumphant cry, he lunges forward in a wild charge. For Lord Bedlam! Now's my chance. I don't have the opportunity to win a whole lot of fights. But everything that's happened recently, I think I can pick up a move or two. Might do the trick. Fate left, go right! 
Maybe this didn't fool Miss Dynamo, but I'm willing to bet it Dave is a lot slower. In multiple ways, really. As Dave uh, jukes my shoulder towards the left, surely a blunt, this move leaves Dave alternately discombobulated and struggling to maintain his balance. With Dave's feet tied to knots, he's left wide open. I take advantage with a big swing from my baton. A baton finds its marks delivering a sh sharp shot to Dave's kidney, letting a pulse of electricity. His own baton slips from his fingers. He stumbles to the side before crumpling into a twitching purple heap. I guess second time was the charm with that move. I glance down at Dave, still panting from the skirmish. Don't forget to put that ass kicking on your report, buddy. I almost feel bad, but he really left me, didn't leave me many options. I need to catch up with Nova, or we could both be dead. Scorpion could find either of us any minute. I don't think that little stunt is going to work on someone like her. But no time to dwell on it. I need to get moving. I take a deep, calm breath as I start down the hallway at a jog, leaving Dave behind. I find myself moving in autopilot, uh, winding up my way through the fortress halls without slipping, stopping to consider my location. That's a big advantage I have over Nova even if her pace is probably faster. So while it's tempting to push myself in an effort to keep up and a, st a steady jog is probably best bet. It's just have to have hope that it's enough. After a time, I start seeing sirens of her escape, scorch marks, a few of my unconscious comrades and eventually some distant sounds to match. Almost there, I try to calm my pounding heartbeat. This is really happening, isn't it? Even with my cafeteria shortcut, we're really going to have to fight our way out of here. Am I ready for that? Doesn't matter. Guess it's happening anyways. I don't know what help I'll be to someone like her, but I gotta try my best. Signs of uh, Nova's power uh, seeing passes grows more and more dense, but something else, Joe joins the KD a henchman. Blast long marks melted scars on the floor and walls still glowing of the heat of what made them. I know what that means. But I still not ready for the sight that awaits me. As I round the next corner I get to a stop. Madame Scorpion looms over shiny Nova. Sword level eyes gleamed and flickered in red light. Nova's mask filters in 
the air between them sliced clean in half, leaving a deflective glare up obscure. Ah, uh, there it is. That's the look I was hoping for. Such a selfish girl, hiding that behind flimsy masks and gaudy helmets. I could feel it last night, you know, even as you so futilely tried to subdue it. But resolve like that, it has a heat to it that can't be contained. I need to sneak up on her. I can't wait to watch it flicker and die. Oh, I can't wait to blast that smug little smirk clean off your face. So I guess that makes us even. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Whether or not you're adorned in your full armored ensemble, we're hardly even. While Scorpion Eyes doesn't appear to leave uh, Nova, I see a flicker of recognition, and her smirk glows even slightly. Ah, Stanley. There you are. Such perfect timing. It does make me wonder. What has you wandering the halls at this early hour? You don't strike me as one who rises with the sun. Why, have we caught you in the midst of a morning tryst? With whom, I wonder? Um, uh, well, I... Oh, don't be so bashful. You must share the details, I insist. But first, be a dear and restrain this imposter. It would be fitting, I think, for you of all people to be the one to capture Shining Nova. He's not going to do that. He isn't. That's right. He's not just some puppet for you to command. Stan's his own person with his own choices. And he's chosen to reject you. He's coming with me. From now on, he doesn't have to be henchman number 065. He can just be Stan. And whoever that might be is up to him. Well, yes. So it is. Don't you see what she's doing? All Kate has done is lie to you. And this time is no different. Lies and manipulation. Stanley, listen to me. What Shining Nova and all those like her trade in her delusions. Impossible dreams that they dangle in front of ordinary people as a reward for playing by their rules. Has she promised to make you one of them? It will never happen. Your bounty will be a handshake and a farewell while she and her famous comrades take all the glory. Or it would be, if you had any hope of surviving such a betrayal. Make no mistake, Stanley. Defiance will earn you nothing but a slow death. Go on, Stanley. Do it. Stan, don't. I, uh... This is it. Whatever I do next, I have the feeling there's no going back. Help Shiny Nova. I won't! I didn't wait for a response, either before the woman has time to react. I charge forth, weapon in hand, right at Madam Scorpion. I can see the shock on her face as I, as she turns towards me. Hard to blame her. It's kind of surprised. I kind of surprised myself right now, if I'm being honest. I was like, it's like an instinct, an emotion took the wheel as soon as I made my decision. I guess you could call it a case of fight or flight. And for once, I decided to fight! To really, sincerely fight! It was never in doubt of those who ch Scorpion chooses. As soon as I draw close, her shock turns into anger. Her sword moves to block my baton. The shift was so fast, it leaves me feel like a stick in the mud. But while my reflexes are too slow for the supervillain, there's someone else who is 
a lot faster. Get down. Again, I'm too slow. Barely managed to put on the brakes before Scorpion drops into a crouch to avoid whatever Nova was planning. For the moment, it looks like Nova's concern for my safety has backfired. This is it. Until Madame Scorpion sees the metal spear that practically falls right on top of her. It beeps ominously as it rolls to a stop. Oh shit. Nate! I try to cover my eyes and turn away from the blast that follows. But it still leaves my ears ringing, my vision spotty, though the haze, I feel someone grip my arm. Come on, move! I don't argue my legs uh, competently with uh, Nova's request, but time, but the, by the time my vision clears, we are racing down the hall, another hallway. Madam Scorpion is out of sight for now, anyways. Nova is still leading the way and starting to make the a right turn. Yet, even with addition confusion, I recognize the hallway. I resist and tug the other direction. No, left, cafeteria is this way. There's a hint of hesitation in Nova's eyes, but quickly disappears. With a quick nod, she follows me to the left. You're sure about this cafeteria thing? Positive. Faster and there's a chance Scorpion doesn't guess we're headed there. Best bet. Honestly, I find it a lot crazier that you just rabbit seasoned a super-powered assassin. It works more often than you think. Ask me about Dr. Calamity later. But like, later. Right. Breathing time. Very important. Our chatter stops, leaving only a chorus of alarms, pounding footsteps, and increasingly haggard breaths. My heart and legs are completely over which of them can protest more painfully. But I can't afford to listen to them. We're nearly there. Hold you traitors! Hulk in the name of Lord Bedlam! Yes, tremble, you treasonous swine! Tremble before the sight of your doom! For I, Lord Bedlam, do not suffer fools, treachery, or long delivery times on Lair Dash! And like a soggy bag of fries, I shall toss your double-crossing behinds straight into the trash! And see you branded with the one star review of righteousness! Now behold the glory of Lord! Oh, my glory! As I sidestep Lord Bedlam's twitching form, I can't help but wince. Did you have to blast him in the crotch? Wasn't sure it would get through the helmet. You seem kind of underhanded for a superhero. Greetings, Dan! Right. We burst through the cafeteria door. Nova hesitates again. I continue onwards, waving her towards the far side of the room. Kitchen! Uh, she nods and resumes her pace, vaulting over the counter while I run around it. Only when we are through the kitchen doors, I do slow down. Luckily, it seems the, like the alarms emptied out the whole cafeteria. We're alone. Okay. There should... should be an exit to a loading dock. Phew. Oh, God. Can you lung collapse from breathing too hard? Holy shit. Loading dock? Right. For food deliveries. Keep thinking. Gingerly, we... Uh... We weave our way past applications, uh, a 
appliances and countertops until we're at the back of the kitchen. There's a fact. Several doors, one to a bathroom, one to a meat locker. Third one looks that looks promising. That's it. I nod. She opens the door to revealing an empty concrete box. But with one with thin beams of shun by poking through the crack in a large metal door on the opposite wall. Gate will be locked, but there's a one-way hatch next to it. No keypad or anything, so no one will even know we used it. So that's where the emergency exit is. I think there had to be at least one way out without an electronic lock. That's just Secret Bunker Architecture 101. Hey, how come this wasn't part of the tour? That seems like a serious safety oversight. You just took my boss out with a laser to the nuts, and this is where you question our confidence. All right, I'll save it for the debrief. Come on, let's get that thing open before someone wanders in here. Yep. Shiny Nova I entered the loading dock, letting the door close behind us. In the entrance of covering our tracks, we leave the lights off, letting a blue glow of Nova's weapons illuminating our path forward. Once we reach the door, I went at the sound as it makes I as I launch it, fully expecting a ominous red glow of Madame Scorpion Sword at the corner of my eye with every creaking crow. But our luck holds and the only light that enters the room is a blinding white sunlight that pours in once at least the when eh. The door at least swings open. Nova exits first. I stumble through afterwards, shielding my eyes from the sun. I still squirm as I still squinting as I swing the door open behind us, leaving a mossy covered slab of metal with no latch or handle. Another minute or two passes before my eyes fully adjust. Until now, following Nova's feet as she picks her way through the forest. So I take a moment to finally raise my gaze and give our surroundings a proper look. I don't recognize anything. We must be have gotten further than I thought. As my body just realized this, I stumble and come to a halt. Nova turns around. You okay? I realize that I haven't seen her face clearly. Uh. <clears throat> Where's my other pill? There it is. Uh, thanks to the mask and the dim light of the lair, but her eyes are rose-set brown with glints of uh, flickering beneath the surface, like whiskey and coffee. Yeah, just, just give me a second. I put my hands on my knees and start doubling over, but I feel uh, Nova's hand on my shoulder. When I look up, I find her smiling down at me. Not yet, okay? Just a little further, then you can rest all day. Right. That sounds nice. As I stand up straight, I lean on uh, Nova for support and take a deep breath. Thanks. No problem. By the logic of a certain SNS game master, we're basically a full-fledged party now. That means we've got to support each other, right? She offers a smile 
and a playful smirk on the shoulder before resuming her hike. I followed abatedly with more effort. As we walk, I try again to get a better sense of her. Our surroundings, though nothing is familiar, I can generally tell what direction we're heading based on the sun. So, uh, where are we almost? If you don't mind me asking. The highway is the other way. That's the point. They won't think to look in this direction. Makes for a better hiding spot. Hiding spot? Oh man, tell me we're not camping. I mean, we technically had some survival training, but I would always smuggle some energy bars with me, and I'm fresh out right now. As much as I want to see you struggle with a tent, no, it's not a hiding spot for us. Then what? Nova holds up her uh, finger up to her lips and smirk. Let me show you. Still smirking, she slips into a bush and disappears. Confused but grateful for the respite, I lean against the tree and wait. Silence doesn't last long. And at this distance, I hear a Low, ominous hiss of groaning metal in a series of uh, uh, quietly clicks and clacks. As that chorus ends, heavy footfalls replaces it, stopping through the undergrowth until their shining armor con condor is revealed. You'll have to slip into something more comfortable. Think it suits me? Yeah, holy shit! I don't know where the rebels are hiding, I swear! Oh, right! Hang on, let me switch off the voice modulation. There we go. Is mine really that much freakier than Lord Bedlam's? Just more jarring now that I know what you actually sound like. Though you could probably make a quick buck selling that tech to guys like him if you want to pull a scorpion. I'm good, thanks. Speaking of scorpions. Nova's head swivels back and forth for a moment, scanning the forest. Now that I know who is in there, I can see a seemingly similar in her posture and movements. It's surreal, like deja vu. We're clear for now, but I can't say how long. Time to evac. She extends her an armored hand in my direction. All aboard! Are you... are you going to carry me? Obviously! Fastest way out of here. Well, unless you want me to stuff you in the armor delivery pod, but I can't promise I will be any more comfortable. Don't worry, I won't drop you. Alright, I trust you. All right. I trust you. But just so I know what I'm paying for, will there be any complimentary snacks? I know most people prefer the peanuts, but I love those little biscuit things myself. So if you have any... That's first class only. Sorry. The only seat left is in the luggage compartment, which you can book for the low, low price of not getting dumped into the Pacific Ocean. That is quite the deal. But in that case, I'm definitely going to need to grab a cinnamon roll before I board. Do you want one? Uh, a breath, a breathing mask smirks at me, cutting me off before I could uh, bladder on any further. Just put on the mask, dork. It'll let us crank up the speed and altitude a little. Fine, fine. I put on the mask over my face and secure the strap to the back of my head. When I'm done, Nova once again reaches her hand out. This time I take it. Hang on, don't forget, I've got you. As Nova pulls me in tight, one of the steel clad arms slips securely around my waist while the other moves to stabilize my neck. 
I'm being cared princess bridal style. And I don't care. <laughs> I hear her suit thrust it, uh, thrusters roar to life. And suddenly we are soaring skyward at a credible speed. The cold metal embrace is kind of cozy. It, but it is certainly secure. I think her joints have literally locked me in place. I'm no danger to uh, falling down to whatever we're flying over. Yeah, definitely not much of a view either, but. I guess that is what I expect from Shiny from Nova. She is more interesting in making sure I'm protected than showing off. This is the person who was struggling to even pretend to be evil in an SNS game after all. How the hell did I end up caught in orbit with someone like this? I feel like I crossed some invisible barrier. Like I'm supposed to live my life in a neat little box. And now, I have left it. I can't even begin to guess where our destination lies. And not just the physical one that I end up at where when we land it. That has been be the case for a long time. That as much as the wind races through my hair. The roar of the thrusters has the hearts racing. Make a wager! An apartment on Olympus. I should have. Oh, I should have named it Reveal. Damn it. Oh, I'll just rename it once uploaded on YouTube. Maybe because maybe it's because of the adrenaline, but the flight itself seemed short. Before long, I hear the thrusters grow quiet, and I feel myself pulled into a slow descent. This is it. Hang on. I hear. Uh, the sound of some kind of hatch open as we slow as we slowly evenly further float gently downwards until at last I hear a click of Nova's boots and felt solid ground beneath my own. Told you I had you. And with that, she lets me go. I stumble forth on my wobbly legs as I remember how to stand and squint to adjust to my new surroundings. It is bright thanks to the large uh, skylights, one of which sides close above us, guessing that's how we entered. All that light and the large open floor plan sits in a spark contrast to the cramped dark halls of Lord Bedlam's lair. I almost go as far to call it luxurious if half of it weren't covered in equipment and coffee cups. Nice place. 
Very fancy for a backup workshop. Thanks! The location really sucks if you can't fly, so I got a pretty good deal on it. But it's actually more of a live-work type of situation. Oh, yeah. I see that. I sidestep. Uh, is Thray a bit of curiosity that falls off of the nearby coffee table? Seems more like a work work situation to me, but I can't really talk. And there's nothing back up about it. This is the workshop. Everything that Shiny Nova is and will be comes through here. Ah. I guess I just figured you had a bunch of safe houses and villas all across the world. Seemed on brand, you know? I thought even one villa is out of being used to me. I know I always make those which superhero is secretly a billionaire vlogs, but this is a whole operation. Well, regardless, it's a lot nicer than what I'm used to. No question there. Sometimes I forget that normal homes have windows. No kidding. I was only in that lair for a few days, and I feel like I have a vitamin deficiency. Speaking of which... I hear an unseen bit of Nova's armor uh, twist and click into place. Moments later, the suit cracks open, and she steps out like emerging from a high-tech cocoon. Great to be in my second skin again, but I want to take in the sunlight while I can. Even engineers need it every once in a while. In fact, I think I'm gonna go change out of this too. No need to be paid anymore. You good on your own for a while? Yeah, sure. I'll just entertain myself by pressing buttons and touching the most dangerous looking equipment while you're gone. You don't mind, do you? I'll have to ask my roommate. Kepler 1604, activate watchtower protocol. Target zone, Alpha. <laughs> Suddenly, the Nova's armor snaps close and stands up straight. Eyes glow with a purpose. I raise my hand and take a step back. Joking, joking. I'll be good. Yeah, I know. For your protection more than anything. I don't think we were followed, but better safe than sorry. I mean, yeah. Seriously, relax. I'll be back in a few, okay? Alright. She winks and turns lightly on her heel. Already, she pulled off one of the gloves and promptly tosses it over her shoulder. Out of reflex, I catch it before it hits me in the chest. You did a good thing today, Stan. Try to enjoy it a little. I watch as Nova disappears through the, a nearby doorway. My gaze lingers for just a moment before turning to the glove. I guess this will be the last time I see Kate, isn't it? I turn the glove over in my hand, attempting that it, oh, what that means until movement catches my eye. It's the shiny Nova's empty suit, staring back at me with hollow eyes. Hey, the suit doesn't. The suit does nothing. You don't talk, do you? Maybe with a funky accent? The suit says nothing. That's a shame. I'd have given you an accent. Something you wouldn't expect, though, like Yiddish or Canadian. British computers are played out. Know what I mean? The suit does not know what you mean. Whatever, dude. I've got a vision, okay? You'll see. With care, I set the discarded uh, glove aside take a good look around the room. Might as well explore a little bit. Where to start? Oh, 
Let's go over towards the workstation. I wander over to a large, uh, cluttered workstation that dominates half of this of the space. Multiple computers, notes, armor components laying scattered around across the workbench. The mess even spreads into the surrounding floor, like an overarching blast zone or something. I tap one of the uh, unfinished components with my foot, it wobbles a bit, but thankfully it doesn't spark or explode. It really looks like she makes and repairs every piece of her boot herself right here. No factory, no smarts, no smartly dressed butler. Unless you're, you count the suit itself, anyways. After our riveting conversation, I certainly don't. So, this is how a top 20 hero lives, huh? Works out of one bedroom apartment. Like they've tried to watch a startup for five years. And those inventions are right around the corner for real this time. Like I said, it's a big upgrade from the old hole in the ground. But I expect something more uh, glorious from someone who rubs shoulders with the global heroes. Uh, Pathion. Maybe it's just how Nova is. My attention wanders as I pick up one of the many discarded coffee cups, exclaiming the name that's written on the side that says Nobody. I snort. Okay, unless Ulysses. Oh, Ulysses! <laughs> oh, Ulysses has got this here! Too paranoid to give your name to the barista? I suppose an apartment like this tracks there, but even so. Eventually, suddenly. Nova's suit starts beeping as I turn around to one of the will. Those proximity alert? I set down the coffee cup and follow the suit's gaze just in time for an all too familiar sight. Uh oh. Hey, Galileo! What are you suited up for? Did you make a pit stop on the way back or something? Thought for sure you'd beat me here. When the suit doesn't respond, a uh, dynamo taps the helmet, peers into the visor. With her attention occupied, I try to scoot behind one of the pillars. Not in there, huh? Jesus, don't tell me she's having this thing stand guard when she uses the bathroom. It's not like anyone could even figure out that this place exists, much less break. Suddenly, a dynamo goes rigid, spins in my direction. Tip whirling, I freeze mid step, slowly raises my hand in greeting, hoping that my nervous smile comes across to more casually than it feels. Uh, hey again. Sorry for ghosting you on Wednesday. I know you said you hate when people do that, but you seem busy. You're not still sore about it, are you? Sore, you say? Ah, walk into that one. What the hell are you doing here, Sunshine? And where's Nova? Why do you think? I was invited. Funny story, actually. 
Before I can finish, Dynamo bursts forth. One moment we were talking, the next, my legs are dangling in the air, and Nova has me pinned against the pillar with one arm. No jokes, no bullshit. This isn't a bag of kibble. This is my friend. Where is she? She prepares, presses me harder into the pillar. I wave my arms above my head, trying to signal my surrender. Holy shit, lady! I'm trying to tell you, she's fine! She's the one who brought me here! Told you no more bullshit. She raises me farther off the ground. Crap, she's not. Well, by a word I say, crap, crap, crap. One last time. Where is she? Right here, Dynamo. Now put the dork down. Uh, Dynamo lets me slip onto the floor unceremoniously. As she whirls around, I catch face full. Uh, cape as I stumble to find my footing. Uh, luckily, Nova is steady. before I fall down from my ass. Surprised. I can't leave either of you alone, can I? And you! She turns to the empty Nova suit and throws her hands out of dismay. You were supposed to be keeping an eye out. Are you really gonna make me review the Watchtower Protocol Code again? Come on, man. The suit says nothing. You should really give that thing a voice. I have a few accents in mind. Later, Stan. Okay, okay. I'll just write them down or something. Sorry, Nova. I was just acting on instinct. You never bring anyone up here. I brought you, didn't I? Well, yeah, we're a team. We had our own hashtag for a minute. And this guy's just some dude. I know you've been working undercover, and sure, Sunshine's fun to mess with, but he works for a supervillain, Nova. Madam freaking Scorpion was personally protecting him. Worked for a supervillain? Past tense. And he was willing to fight Scorpion to help me. Dynamo hesitates and gives me a hard look before looking back at Nova. How do you know it's not an act? Another one of her traps? I don't, but I trust him. And I'm just supposed to go on that? Look, you're the smartest person I know, but... In lieu of a reply, Nova turns to me. I hold out my hand, palm up. There's something in it, a hashtag that reads, Kate. At a moment of hesitation, I take it. Is, is it he torn? She must have had removed it with care. When I was wearing this, I was Kate. When I'm in the suit, I'm Shining Nova. Nova, don't. But here, you can call me Victoria. Victoria Vasquez. Nice to meet you. Thanks for trusting me? Nice to meet you too. And thanks for trusting me with something so important. I'm still just Stan now. No matter where I am or what I'm wearing. I hold out my hand. Uh, Victoria gives it a firm, exaggerated shake. 
running out of small life as she does. I can practically hear Miss Dynamo's rolling her eyes in the background. What about what you're not wearing? That factor into it? Nah, Stan's my stripper name too. See, it's so good because they never suspect it. I didn't need that image. No one needed that image. That's not what my tip said. But seriously, thank you. I know that you wouldn't tell your real name to just anyone, as several baristas can attest to. Oh, you saw that, did you? <laughs> you should see how she orders takeout. It's like a pizza scavenger hunt. There's a system, and the system works. Or maybe next time you'd like to pay for all those mozzarella sticks yourself, Miss Superpowered Metabolism. Hey, you leave Mama Mozzarella's signature sticks out of this. Those are sacred. Nova, or rather, Victoria, uh, scoffs at Dynamo's quip and shakes her head. Well, I take it that means you're satisfied then? No more trust issues with Sunshine here? Yeah, I'm satisfied. But you didn't have to go that far, Victoria. Maybe not, but we can't afford any division here. Stakes are too high, and our enemy is too dangerous. If we're going to stop Madame Scorpion in time, the three of us need to trust each other. We won't stand a chance. You know that as well as anyone, Dynamo. Wait, stop Madame Scorpion? We? We as in also me? Yep, that's the plan. Shining Nova, Miss Dynamo, and also Stan take down Madame Scorpion and Lord Bedlam. You up for it? Hell yeah! Yeah, let's do it. Just don't expect me to be much help against Madame Scorpion. If you hadn't pulled that little stunt back there, they'd be mopping my intestines off the floor right now. I think you'd be surprised. You don't give yourself enough credit. Oh no, I think he gives himself exactly enough credit. Unless you discovered that her weakness is people bleeding on her. First of all, her sword would probably cauterize his wounds, so we'd need burned flesh to be her weakness. Really boosting my confidence. But, more importantly, there are other ways you can help besides committing suicide via supervillain. Just trust me, okay? You'll see when we go over the plan. But, for now, let's take a little time to recover and get our bearings, okay? Recovery sounds good. Uh, convinced that Miss Dynamo is no longer about to pound me to dust, I lean on the pillar I previously been pen on. Uh, too, and I let out a weary sigh. Sure thing. I figured you wouldn't be executing the final phase until tomorrow, but I wanted to make sure you made it out of there all right. I always do, don't I? Victoria extends her closed fist, and Dynamo meets it, making her own in a light fist bump. Then they suddenly pull. The small older woman in the rough. One arm hug. You thought you could get away with just that? No way. Dynamo, come on! Always do. Little shit. People really think I'm the cocky one. You know, for a second there, I was really worried that you'd gone from superhero to super no. Dynamo! Caught off guard, uh, uh, Victoria fails, uh, promptly in Dynamo's grass, but the taller healer just roughs uh, Victoria's hair with her free hand before finally letting her go. Just admit it, you only hate that joke because deep down you think it's hilarious. You laughed that one time. Because I was delirious. Victoria clears her throat and straightens her hair as if somehow that would make it look like it that never happened. I take it this means nothing went wrong last night. You kidding? That was a piece of cake. What 
did you know Scorpion wouldn't be there anyway? She was playing spells and swords with us. I know, it's still kind of a fever dream for me too. That's putting it mildly. I can picture it. Victoria did the voice, didn't she? <laughs> oh yeah, she was way into character. It was award worthy. A little heavy on the prose though. Whatever, you're both just jealous. Anyway, if you're all good here, then I'll head out for now. Want me to take the suit with me? Yeah, might as well toss out a red herring. Got a couple backups online if I need them. Kepler 1604, activate dog walker protocol. Handler, Miss Dynamo. Shining so uh, Nova suit, once again, <laughs> blows to with life, turns its attention to Dynamo. Up and above, one of the skylights start to slide open. Got it. I'll be sure to do a few passes on the skyline to make sure we're seen. And before I forget, you can have this back too. There's a few messages, but nothing critical. Dynamo pulls a small silver device from her belt and tosses it lightly to Veronica, who casually snatches it out of the air and that the cape hero turns to leave. See you tomorrow. Oh, and Sunshine, behave. I go bitten off of in her relief as uh, Nova turns her eyes upwards and launches herself into the air, shooting through the skylight into the open air. The empty Nova suit falls shortly, and the skylight closes. You know, I'm not sure who came closer to killing me today. Her or Scorpion? Scorpion, hands down. Don't let Dynamo scare you. She's just looking out for me. Honestly, I think she likes you. Come on, let's eat something. I'm starving. Victoria walks towards the small kitchenette, tucked away. Uh, on the wall adjacent to the living room, I follow. There isn't really a dining table or bar, so I drove the stool over to take a and take a seat. Let's see, the pasta should still be good. She pokes her head into the bread and returns with a half empty Tupperware container casually as she cracks the lid open to take a whiff. Nope, that's a big, big nope. She hastily seals the lid, stuffing it back into the fridge. You're leaving it in there? Well, if I toss it out, it'll stink up the garbage. And that's just a disaster that I don't have time for right now. Finally, I wonder if I just witnessed a supervillain's origin. A story for evil for the sediment leftovers as Veronica pulls out a milk container. I try to look for expiration date as stealthily as I can, but she quickly, but she is quick to notice. Don't worry, it's the lactose-free stuff that expires later, so it's probably still good. You cool with cereal? Hey, I won't complain. What are my options? Uh, well... She sheepishly walks over to a nearby cabinet. Uh, opening to reveal a wall of identical blue and white cereal boxes. All with shiny, you know, helmet plastered on them. There's, a uh, really just the one. She pulls out a box and sets it on the counter next to the milk. I stare silently, blink as if this would somehow change what I'm seeing. Wow, you're actually feeding me cereal from a box with your face on it. I get this for free, okay? And you don't have to have any. I'm kidding, please eat some. Dynamo won't take any more boxes and I'm running out of cabinet space. All right, pour me a bowl of hero O's. 
That's a misprint, right? I asked the same thing when we filmed the commercial. After a minute of searching, Victoria manages to find a pair of bowls that aren't sitting in the sink. Of course, as a bow, I take mine with a mocking vintage. Sitch. It's an honor to eat your sugary grain mixture, Shiny Nova, ma'am. Really regretting that I didn't let Dynamo get some shots in earlier. The spider complaining. I can see she was uh fighting to hold back a grin as she boosts herself up to the counter in the place of a proper seat. Her legs dangle off the ground as she grabs her bumbo and digs it. You know, it's not bad. There's way worse ways to make a buck. Oh, uh, they don't pay me. I mean, they pay, but the money goes to the association. She shakes her head as she swallows another bite. Unless you're willing to do some serious money laundering, there's pretty much no way to make money on sponsorship without giving up your secret identity. So why don't you? Well, a lot of reasons. I mean, there's the whole safety of myself and my loved ones, yada yada, you know, all the classic stuff. She leans in, leans forwards, and points at me with her spoon on the infant sits. But also, once you go public, there's only three real paths forward. You can work for the feds, you can start wearing designer. I thought that armor was designer. Huh? Oh, sorry. That means you've retired from real superhero work and are just a celebrity, basically. So, you know, you can start using expensive costumes that wouldn't be practical to work in. Designer. Anyway, the third option is really only viable if you're someone like Dynamo, and that's sleeping with your mask on. She stops me before I could ask. Not literally. What I mean is that both your identities merge into each other. You can still keep a secret ID, but you're legally one person doing business as your hero name. It's complicated. But, like I said, that only works if you're like Dynamo. And you come packaged with powers that make you tough to intimidate and let you operate on a lower budget. Not really an option for someone like me. She shrugs and turns back to her cereal. I let out a grunt of acknowledgement and do the same. As I crunch on my cereal and mull over her expression, I hear. Uh, Victoria let out a small laugh. Maybe this is weird to say, but I'm glad you didn't know that. It's nice to be able to flip the tables on you a little, Mr. Griggled Veteran. Honestly, I was just thinking about that. I guess neither of us really had a reason to think about how the other side's job actually works. I glance around <laughs> the apartment, taking it all in. Or maybe we just had different pictures of it in our heads. Mmm, is that your way of asking, did you live like this? No, no. It's a nice place. It just all seems like it. Exciting. Exciting? Really? Eating stale cereal you got for free and covering your coffee table in scrap parts seems exciting to you. Well, you make it seem exciting, at least. That's just because you think I'm... <sighs> Never mind. I don't think you'd say the same thing if someone else was describing it. Let's put it that way. Victoria Strokes. It's not for everyone. There were nights when I was trying to debug my armor's OS or repair a joint with scrap metal, and I just wonder, damn, why are you going through all this trouble? I didn't ask you to. But then I realize that's sort of the point. I take a moment to mule over her words, but all I can manage is to offer a small hmm before turning back to the task of devouring my cereal. It's weird. Since I found out that she was Shining Nova, 
she manages to seem both more or less like the armored demigoddess that confronted me on Wednesday. I don't know how, what to think, make of it. It doesn't take long to finish our makeshift uh, meal, and soon our empty bowls are joined into the other discarded dishes in the sink. You know, I just realized that's the first meal I've had that didn't come out of a vending machine or the twisted mind of Chef Antonio in at least a year. Really? Now I feel kind of sad. Don't. It's a vast improvement. But if you're feeling guilty, you could make it up by giving me the official tour. I spoke to that a little earlier, but it only seems fair, doesn't it? Fine. She clears her throat and dresses her around in the, all directions. This is my workshop, gym, living room, kitchen, and office. The bathroom's over there, my bedroom's over there. She points to from one door to the other. Thank you for signing up for our tour. Please remember to tip your guide. For that? No way. You didn't give me a tip and I was tons better. Hands down. Debatable. They say brevity is the soul of a tour, you know. Plus, I give out party favors. As Victoria backs towards her workshop, she pulls out a silver device that Miss Dynamo tossed her earlier and returns the gesture in my direction. Unlike her, I bobble it a bit before securing it. What is it? It's my NWAJ communicator. I had Dynamo carry it around to make it seem like I wasn't off the grid. Can you play the messages on it for me? I have to start writing some parsers on the files I got from Scorpion's supercomputer. Look for the ones that have a star by them. Those are high priority. I thought we were resting and recovering. We are? Relative to what we could be doing, this is very restful. I shake my head, but activated the device nonetheless as uh, Victoria uh, hooks up the data to one of her computers. It's like a cross between a miniature smartphone and an old pager. And it doesn't doesn't not take ah, but, 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 does does not does not please uh, I'm gonna have a rough time with this aren't I? to navigate to the uh, message menu even though it looks like there are numerous missed calls there's only three messages uh, Night Nightingale Mr. Fluke MM Android and none of them have a star that Nova mentioned. I'll play all of them. I navigate to the message labeled Nightingale and press it. Hey Nova! Oh no, that's too informal, isn't it? Sorry, I mean Shiny Nova. That's better. Anyway, hi, it's Nightingale. You know, from the NWHA, the new girl. I spilled that coffee on you the first time. about my fear of heights and how you said that even if I have to fly really high, I should always land close to the ground. Well, it may have slipped my mind while I was on patrol and now I'm kind of stuck at the top of a skyscraper and my wings won't manifest, so, uh, call me back or send a helicopter. Thanks. Did I hear that right? She has wings and a fear of heights? Yeah, it's been something of a work in progress. Sweet kid, though. I kind of feel bad I wasn't able to help. Are there any more messages from her? Yeah, one more. Hold on. Hey, Shining Nova. It's Nightingale again. So I got one wing to show up, but despite what anime has taught me, flying that way is really, really hard. It's okay, though. I only threw up a little bit, and I landed on a roof that has a fire escape. 
Whatever. Tell Dynamo about them. We can totally forget this ever happened. No, uh, just please do that. Thanks. See you at the next meeting. Guess it turned out okay. Ish. That's good. Sounded like that kid really looks up to you. That happened a lot with the younger heroes? Yeah, I suppose. It's hard to do what we do if you're not a little passionate about it, but at the same time, you need to lose a starry-eyed naivete if you want to make a real impact. When you're facing down a supervillain, you can't have a fan watching your back, you know? It won't work. Yeah, I can see how that would be a problem. I turn back to the communication... The communicator to look for more messages. Mr. Fluke. I navigate to the message labeled Mr. Fluke and press play. Hey, Nova, Fluke! I know you're used to me calling you with bad news, but uh... Okay, this is still pretty bad. <clears throat> Just try to have a blow. So. But look, point is, whenever you're back, you may get some questions from the press about an exploding candy factory. <laughs> And I know I'm obligated to call all the senior members to make them aware when something like this happened. But I also just personally want to say, this one's not my fault. I mean, did you know sugar dust is explosive? I didn't. Hell, the candy crew sure didn't seem to. And they're candy themed villains for Pete's sake. I just figured, hey, the factory's abandoned. A little old snap won't hurt nobody. <laughs> and it didn't. Everyone's okay, except that not the factory is all. So yeah, um, <clears throat> just letting you know, see you when I see you. Don't tell Dynamo. Sugar dust is explosive? Seriously? And how did this guy make it explode? Ooh, yeah. That's how the fifth and seventh candy man did it. As for how our friend Mayor caused it, well, he didn't. Mr. Fluke doesn't really cause anything himself, at least not directly. He just snaps his fingers, and things start going wrong. The hypothesis is that it's a type of causality manipulation. Think of it as uncontrolled, extreme bad luck. That sounds... less than helpful. You just keep him around to keep a leash on him, or what? And as a last resort. When nothing's working for us, sometimes all you can do is make sure nothing works for the other side, too. Honestly, if we can't stop Scorpion here, he's part of Plan Z. I just hope it doesn't come to that. Yeah, me too. I turn back to the communicator. MM Android. I navigate the messages labeled MM Android. Can we get this done? Yo, Nova, it's MMA, just giving you a shout. Missed you in the hexagon this week. We were supposed to give an exhibition for the rookies, remember? It's no big deal, Dynamo covered for you. But just give me a heads up next time, alright? I know you've always got a lot going on, but we're all here to help when you need it. Speaking of help, my leg was acting up and I was hoping you could take a look at it. I know the association can hook me up with the tech, but you're better at this stuff than anyone. Anyway, no rush. I'll catch you at the next sparring session. If you show up this time, anyway. Later! Oh, and I had to resort to flattery to bring Dynamo in, so don't tell her you were my first choice, okay? Funny, that didn't sound like a robot. Because it's not. He's a human with cybernetic limbs. Good hand-to-hand -hand guy, though. So he's really M.M. Cyborg? Yeah, it doesn't have the same ring to it, I guess, but... Man, sparring lessons, repairing other superhero gadgets? Do you really do all that? How do you manage it? Well, like you said, sometimes I don't. Or I just don't sleep. Still, that's the gig. If you really want to make an impact on the world, then you have to push yourself to your limits. I'll have to thank Dynamo for covering for me. Again. I'm sure she knew the whole time what happened. Probably milked that flattery for all it was worth. Well, looks like that message was the last one. Alright, thanks for checking. Oh, come on, isn't this thing supposed to be solid state? This should be going faster. I turn off the communication device. 
and set it aside as Victoria continues to tap away at her computer, uh, grumbling to herself. Still tired, I strive for young as I walk over to see exactly what she's up to. When I get a good look at her setup, it's very easy to see why she's so distracted. That's some battle station. Can you actually keep track of all four of those screens at once? Not really. No one can, actually. Multitasking is just switching between different things really quickly. The holographic screens are only running a diagnostic on Sagittarius 1868 and tracking Kepler 1604 in the background. She gestured to one of the blue holographic screens on her far left. To the second one on her far right. I glance at each, then I stare at her blankly. She rolls her eyes. This one's testing one of the suits I have here, and this one's keeping an eye on the one that's following Dynamo. Ah, so the middle two screens are the ones you're actually paying attention to. Yeah, that's where I'm going for the data I grabbed from Scorpion's computer. I need to verify a few things before tomorrow. Could take a while. There's a lot to go through. Oh, I'll bet. This is a second young that isn't quite as stri stifling. Veronica raises her eyebrow in my direction. I'm sorry, am I boring you? No, no. I'm just a little white from the whole running for my life thing still. <laughs> I'm kidding. Damn, you really are tired. I was expecting some kind of retort. Why don't you crash on the couch for a little? I'm gonna be tied up with this for a while anyway. I glance over to the couch, then nod as I another yawn next to me. You know what? It does look awfully inviting. Yeah, alright. That might be nice. But be sure to wake me if you need to tell someone that we're in. I could also bang on an unplugged keyboard and shout double hacking. You know, for moral support. Go get some sleep, dork. You're way less funny when you're drowsy. Who said anything about being funny? That's a Unix system, by the way. Thought you should know. Victoria rolls her eyes again, tries to scoff, but it comes out more as a <laughs> snort. I can tell she's trying not to grin. Ah, uh, don't bother with uh, pretensing smiling to myself all the way over to the sofa. Some rest is really would really be nice. I don't know how Victoria has the energy. Her night was just as long as mine was. And her murdering was even more intense. She actually fought Scorpion while well, I just fled from her. Then again, if this is her place of uh, Witten's situation, anything goes by, she does this all the time. A sweatshirt, a wall, sock, uh, occupying my spot on the couch when I come, when I arrive, and set them aside before er, uh, flopping down on the cushions. A few moments later, I remove, kick off my boots, remove my mask, pause before setting the ladder aside, holding it up to the light. In a few days, I won't be putting this on again, will I? I exhale. Not how I imagined my Saturday going, but do I regret it? I spare a glance at Victoria. She's staring intently at one of the monitors, furling her hair as she thinks. Nah, can't say I that I do. Oh shit. Ooh, this looks pretty. My eyes open up to the side of the stars peering down through the skylight. 
At first, I let my eyes wondering if my vision has just got spotty. But even after that, they remain. Damn. I really was white. How long was I out? Overgrown, I ease myself upright and glance around. So rationally, I remember where I was, and I still feel out of place waking up here. It's like part of a dream. There he is. Now, are you waking up, or is this zombie Stan rising from the grave? Seriously, you sleep like a corpse, dude, not a twitch. I think that's where we're going to save it for now, since it's about to end on my... Since it's roughly around the time I need to end it. So, that's all for now. Until then, I'll see y'all mates next time. Can Stan become a hero? We shall see. Did I forget to... Yes.